our reflection this evening, I'd like to read to you a beautiful letter that was uh, sent by our uh, Superior General in the International Community of the Congregation of the Resurrection, Father Bernard Hilla, and his, uh, his council. His dear Father Murray and brothers of the Ontario, Kentucky province, we are united with all of you in prayer as well as thanksgiving to our risen Lord for the life of our brother, Father Charlie Fady, whom the Lord called from this world this past Saturday. We pray for his resurrection with the same hope which was Charlie's lifelong witness to the church, and in a special way, so many of us resurrectionists who have benefited from his service and holy life. Father Charlie has been for our community, a true model of what we may call an unassuming leader, one who led others by his own example of living of the consecrated life. His quiet smile, his intense spirituality, and gracious words to his community brothers and to all people were in a profound way a declaration of God's unconditional love for each of us. Whether on the local level in the life of your province or in contributions to the international community, Charlie was and continues to be a grace to God's people. His expressions of our fundamental resurrection of spirituality continue to be a light on the formative path of our, relig our religious in various cultures and continents, as well as a challenge to all of us to let ourselves be formed by the Holy Spirit in every phase and every stage of our life's journey, even to the time when aging or physical weakness are the context for our living of the vows. In this year of consecrated life in the Church, we are blessed to celebrate together the hope of resurrection for a religious brother dear to all of us. As representatives of the international CR community, we offer you our fraternal support and prayer for Father Charlie, for his siblings, Barbara and Paul, and all family members, and for the Ontario, Kentucky province. May the angels welcome Father Charles Fady to paradise, and may he be greeted by the Lord's words, Well done, good and faithful servant. Sincerely in Christ, Father Bernard Hilla, Superior General. insurance was the Rock of Gibraltar. The Rock of Gibraltar was the sign, the symbol, the image of the dependability, the stability, the solidness of Prudential Life Insurance. And their motto was, everybody enjoys a piece of the rock. Over the years, today and tomorrow, the image that comes to mind when I think of Father Charlie is that of the Rock of Gibraltar. Charlie was for us the rock in whom we depended to hear the truth. 
He was a rock to provide encouragement and support to us. Loyal, stability, predictability, and unwavering loyalty to Jesus himself. <clears throat> Charlie was completely trustworthy and unflappable, no matter what we said to him or confided to him. Charlie was the rock in holding up the teachings of the Catholic Church and the principles of social justice. Charlie was the rock on whom we depended when our lives were in crisis or chaos and we came to him. Charlie was the rock with the unwavering assurance to us that we are beloved by God, that we are held close to his heart, that we are held within the palm of his hands, that we are redeemable, that we are forgivable, that we are lovable. For me, Charlie was very much the unnamed disciple that John speaks about in the gospel today as Andrew, the unnamed disciple, and John the Baptist standing, Jesus walks by, and John the Baptist says, here is the Messiah. And immediately, Andrew and the other disciple follow Jesus. That's exactly what Charlie would do. And that's where exactly Charlie would send us, whether he was in relationship to us as our teacher or our pastor or our rector or our fellow brother in religious life or our fellow priest or our spiritual director or our spiritual confessor or a relative or our friend. He would send us off to go with Jesus and to ask Jesus, where are you staying? And then he would encourage us to stay there. Spend time there. To waste time there. To be in time there with Jesus. Charlie very much reminds me of Simon Peter, the first shepherd of our church. Because after all, they were both fishermen. <laughs> they both loved fishing. They both enjoyed fishing. The only difference was that Simon Peter made money at fishing. <laughs> Charlie lost money <laughs> with all the lures that got snagged under the rocks and twigs and the ponds and rivers and lakes that he fished in. Understand that here at St. Agatha, periodically in the collection plate, there would be an envelope filled with Canadian tire money. <laughs> and I know encouraging Charlie to replace the lures that he had lost. <laughs> Charlie reminds me of Simon Peter. Because both of these men were called to be disciples of Jesus Christ. To provide leadership to the people to whom they were called to serve. One of the beautiful parts of the gospel today is the part where Andrew, having spent the day with Jesus, goes off and he finds his brother Simon and he says, We have found the Messiah. And he takes Simon and brings him to Jesus. And Jesus says, you are to be called Cephas, the rock. For Peter was one who was the rock of the church for us. Jesus Simon Peter would be one upon whom they who he led they too would depend upon for truth, for encouragement, for support, for stability, for predictability, and an unwavering loyalty to Jesus. It's true that Peter messed up along the way, but Peter, although he was the rock, never had a heart of stone, but a heart of flesh. And he learned to become a redeemed sinner, and how many of us have been encouraged by Charlie and our lives to discover that we are redeemed sinners. Charlie was a man who held various forms of authority throughout his priesthood. But like Simon, his authority never depended upon his power or title. It depended upon his faith and his integrity. And even though some of us have disagreed with Charlie at times, it was difficult to dismiss, dismiss him out of hand because of who he was and how he lived. My fellow brothers in the Resurrectionist community will miss Charlie deeply because he was for us 
a rock. He was for us a pillar that held us up and brought us together in so many ways. Father Joseph de Liberos accompanied Charlie the three nights before he died, and he was telling me that one of those nights Charlie woke up in the middle of the night. He said, I don't know my purpose in life. And Joseph said, Charlie, your purpose is to accept the invitation to live the possible mystery. And Charlie said, oh, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> and he fell back to sleep. Charlie was a priest, a resurrectionist, who sought to bring about the resurrection of society by the sacraments he celebrated, by the proclamation of the Word of God, by how he lived religious life, by, by how he led religious rites and celebrations and services, by the relationships he entered into. It was through his priesthood and religious life that he sought to be a source of hope and joy to God's world. Charlie sought to accompany the people of God on their pilgrim journey when the people of God laughed and danced and sang with the joys and blessings of life. Charlie was with them to sing their songs and dance their dances. But when the people of God cried out in pain or sadness or hardship or sorrow or sickness, Charlie was there with them to walk with them through the valley of tears. A world is a good world, a beautiful world, a loving world. But our world is also a wounded world, a broken world, a world of many divisions. And our world is in need of ambassadors of reconciliation and healing. And Charlie was an ambassador of reconciliation and healing, not only for the world, but for the church and for our religious community. Like St. Paul, Father Charlie fought the good fight. Finished the race. He kept the faith. He has given glory and praise and honor to God by the way he has lived his pilgrim journey. Charlie sought God with all his mind and his heart and his soul and his spirit, and God allowed Charlie to find him. And it is into the hands and heart of that God we now entrust him. So, Charlie, now is the time to say goodbye. We will miss you. We give praise and thanks to God for the gift and the grace and the blessing you were to each and every one of us in this church today by virtue of your life and your example. Eternal rest grant unto Charlie, O oh Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of the faithful departed rest in the mercy and peace of the risen Lord. Amen. Praise be Jesus Christ and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples.
I, I, I really believe that uh, the mission is God's. And, and Jesus participated in that mission, and we're called to participate in that mission. And so, and God hasn't left us deserted. God continues to act in our world today. And, and our task, I think, is to try to identify how and where God's saving action is at work. And then we can ask the question, well, how can we use our charism and our personnel then to, to, uh, to join in God's, the saving action of God that we've recognized?